Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to the second episode of Monstrat Moves with me, your host, Stavika. Tonight's episode is sponsored by Hypnotic Expression Wear. Hypnotic Expression Wear, how we are on the thing. Swash up on the beat, mama tell you what go on dog Hypnotic bring the white as a t-shirt, the neck of V first Hypnotic hot for me, it match with my sneakers Anything swash it and tap in and never cheaper But suit them are weird enough, do research There is a lot of buzz around the COVID-19 vaccine since it was rolled out here on Montserrat on the 8th of February So tonight, we are going to be answering all of your questions because I too have some doubt our guest for tonight's show is one of our very own local nurses, Nurse Violet Brown. Hi, good afternoon, Miss Rodney. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Oh, I'm feeling great. Thank you for joining me on the second episode of Monster at Moves. It is my pleasure to be here. Thank you for having me. Can you tell us a little bit about your role within the Ministry of Health and Social Services here on Montserrat? Well, um, my appointment says the Community Nursing Manager for the Ministry of Health. In my role as Community Nursing Manager, I actually manage the health centers. I do regulation of staff for the four health centers and the mental health unit. I also do program planning and implementation of those programs. I provide reports and reports are to such places as the Statistics Department, the Ministry of Health, Pan American Health Organization, um, UNICEF, and any other agency that would want a report from the Ministry of Health as regards to what's happening within the district. I also am the manager for the expanded program on immunization. And that program is a global key health program, and which is goals to provide effective and quality immunization to target our population. So, we start from zero to five, then we go on to the 15 year olds, then we do the adult population. So that's basically my role as EPI manager. And of course we provide reports, we look at our target population. We do sound technical and managerial capacity in order to achieve the program's goals. And of course we do a lot of training because as things evolve and the trends are moving along, we have to do training and retraining. Wow, that's a lot on your plate, Nurse V. That's only some, but I, I can't give you all in one day. <laughs> I know that yes. the Ministry of Health, they, they rolled out vaccine for Montserrat. Can you tell us what are vaccines and what do they do? Well, vaccines are... So that's a substance that you actually inject into your system to provide immunity. And vaccination is a safe and simple way to protect people against harmful diseases. It basically uses your body natural defenses to build resistance and make your system immune. So it builds resistance against infections, infections like COVID-19. And by doing that, it makes your system immune to any disease and to make it stronger. Okay. Well, you know that I'm afraid of needles. Can you tell the public what do the Ministry of Health have in store? for persons who are afraid of needles, like me? <laughs> well, actually, Stevika, I am very trained in giving vaccines. I have been doing this since about 1990 that I've been assigned to the community. And so I know what it's like. I myself have been afraid of um, injections. So I know how to work along with you. I kind of build your I kind of build your courage to get the vaccine. So I talk you out of it. If you're looking at me, I say, don't focus on me. You can focus on something else. And then we can move along from there. You don't want to see the needle. I tell you, well, don't look. Just look away and it will be fine. However, in this instance, I can tell you about the benefits of the vaccine. 
how it helps to provide immunity for your system as you go along, you know, that sort of thing. So I just talk you through it. And I think by the end of it, I should be fine. And you will be quite willing to take the vaccine. Any vaccine, as a matter of fact. Well, um, <laughs> I'm going you to look forward to I'm this. Well? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to look forward to this. Yes, so I'm looking forward to seeing you, dear. Oh, dear. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, it should be fine. And I, I can tell you, I've actually taken my vaccine. I, I wasn't scared. I can tell you, I knew I had to take it. But I listened to the myths and I also listened to the truth. And I kind of weighed and what got me to was that somebody says to me, um, are you going to take the vaccine? I says, yes. And the person said, I had a dream about you. Please don't take the vaccine. Then somebody else calling from overseas and says, don't, don't you dare take that vaccine. And that was like three persons. And I sat down one day, I said, wow, this must be a sign. Maybe I shouldn't take the vaccine, but you know what happened? Apart from all of that, I looked at the pros and the cons. I looked at what benefits it could give to me. And I said to myself, let no one take away what you have already made your mind up to take this vaccine. So I decided on the very first day, I am going to take the vaccine. And I took it. Okay. I know that there are a few news, news articles and videos circulating making reference to countries who have now banned the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine. Should residents be alarmed by these articles or should they do like you and read the pros and the cons? They should not be alarmed. What I think persons need to do is to read from authentic sources. Don't read everything. I've seen a lot of things on my page, um, even on WhatsApp, even on my Facebook page. And I look at them and I decide which ones I would want to read. And I said, you know what happened? I have to go and do my own research. So apart from that, Paho has thought to train us because I would be a trainer of trainer for months. Right? And so as they train me, then I go and train my staff. I have to be confident with what I'm training. So I have to do a lot of research and I have to work at night burn the midnight oil, find out a little more about the vaccine. And then I can decide, well, yes, I think this vaccine is going to work wonders. Um, in Montserrat right now, we're using the COVID shield vaccine, which was made by Oxford AstraZeneca. Mm -hmm. And it has a high degree of effic efficacy. Um, you may have heard that over the past two weeks, since we started giving the vaccine, that they have done more research on it. And in doing that research, they found out that if you wait a little longer, then your efficacy rate will increase, not by much, but just a little. And I am happy about that also. But AstraZeneca vaccine, it prevents the severe case of the COVID-19 disease, and it's suited for persons well over 18 years of age. So I am confident that we're doing the right thing here. Um, you may read on AstraZeneca, why AstraZeneca? Because it's cheaper. Why are they pushing this on us? It has the same efficacy rate as all of the others. We are going through a trial. As you look at persons who have taken the vaccine, you would find something new with everyone. Even when we give the vaccine in months, we probably would find something. Oh, oh, one of the things that we found, which is new, is not on any literature that I wrote, that persons are saying, now since I got the vaccine, I've been passing urine more frequently at night. It actually happened to me, um, Miss Rodney, and I said to myself, it can't be the vaccine. So I said, it may be attributed to something else that's going on with me. And, but then over the days, as you, because when we give the vaccine, we call a person and follow up, what are you seeing? Are you having any reaction? And they said to me, now as I realized, I pass you in more often. And I said, maybe it's the cold nights, but you know, yeah. it's been real cold in months, right? Very but then when you hear it from two, three, and four persons, then you say, okay, this might be a mild side effect or reaction to the vaccine. So I believe in reading, that's one thing I'm going to ask you to do. Do your own research. Don't listen to people. People, I listen to people and they're telling me that I'm going to go on that, oh, my DNA <laughs> is going to be stolen from me. But what I can say to you, COVID-19 vaccine is highly effective. 
it's storage and handling temperature makes it well suited for Monster because when you look at Pfizer and all the other vaccines, they're asking you to store at minus 20, minus 70 degrees Fahrenheit. Monster cannot store vaccines at that capacity. We don't have the capacity to store that vaccine at that temperature. It means that we would have to roll out some more funds to get more refrigerators at that storage temperature. So it's well suited for us in our hot climate and Monsat has the capacity to store it on island because we didn't have to go out and actually source new refrigerators. That's true. Okay, so I have a scenario for you. Let's mm -hmm. say, God forbid, that I had COVID before. Do you think that I still would be able to take this vaccine? Yes, you should be able to take the vaccines. I've read literature that says if you had COVID-19 before, you can still take the vaccine because it still offers you some protection. However, you don't take it immediately after you have recovered. Some literature is saying that you can take it up to 90 days after. Some say you can take it sooner, but it actually covers you against any severe um, reaction, any severe case of being affected by the COVID-19 disease. So don't give up because as we said, you can get it more than once. You just don't get it and not get it again. But this vaccine actually assists you not to get a severe case. You get a mild reaction, you get um, a mild re reaction to the virus. And so then therefore you'll be able to shake it off. And in terms of transmission, you know how that goes. You will not be able to transmit it readily because you're actually covered against this virus. Okay. So I just want to know if vaccines have an expiry date. Yes, all vaccines come with an expiry date. It actually comes with a manufacturer date also. So it tells you the date of manufacture. It tells you the date of expiration. And so for this vaccine, it's no different to the others. It comes with an expiry date. And if you want another current batch of vaccines that we have now, we'll end at the end of May 2021. Thank you. That was my next question. Oh, I, I was hoping that you wouldn't ask me, um, but then I said, okay, it doesn't make sense to hide it. I'll just volunteer the information. Can you tell our listeners what Sorry, can you tell our viewers why aren't children or persons under the age of 18 eligible for the vaccination? Uh, basically, what I know is that it's never been tested in children under 18. And so the Oxford AstraZeneca has advised us not to give it to children under 18 because it has never been tested. I guess later on when they have started doing their testing, then they will advise us whether or not we should go ahead and give it to persons under 18. But for now, we are going, as the literature says, no persons 18 and under can get the vaccine. Okay. Should people with known medical problems get the vaccine? Yes, these persons can safely receive the vaccine. However, persons who are immunocompromised may not receive the full effectiveness of the vaccine. So sometimes they would say to you, don't give it to these persons. If you give it to them, it doesn't offer them that level of protection that a normal person will get. So you get a lesser protection with that vaccine. I don't know if you want me to tell you what categories of persons, but I guess we'll probably get down to that later on in the conversation. I mean, you can tell me now just to get it out of the way. <laughs> All right. What we do, we make our decisions based on the recommendations from the World Health Organization and the Pan American Health Organization. And we have our priority groups. We've been saying persons over 60 years of age. Those are priority groups. We call them the elderly persons. Persons, as we just spoke about, underlying health conditions such as hypertension, diabetes, asthma, heart disease, etc. Those persons need more protection because they are risk of coming down with the disease is more and in terms of having a greater reaction to the disease they will have a better chance of having a greater reaction as opposed to a younger person without underlying conditions. We also target frontline workers and frontline workers are persons like myself, health staff, um, like the caregivers, those persons at like the homes, you have the police, 
the fire and the prison officers. You have those persons who are working at the ports of entry, for instance, at the airport and of course at the seaport. Those persons will need to be immunized just to protect themselves. Um, COVID does not discriminate here. Eh? And so it doesn't say, it depends on where you're working or whatever you're doing, it comes because you're exposed to it and your risk is higher. So we are targeting those persons with a higher risk um, for COVID-19. So you're trying to tell me that I should encourage my mother and my father to go and get this vaccine because they are frontline workers. Yes. And so I would want you to be an advocate. After we finish here this afternoon, then you'll be more educated. And so I can look forward to hearing that Stebika said, and Stebika has encouraged me to come along. And then when you encourage your parents, then they too will encourage your colleagues. Right, so I'll just walk with them one time when I'm coming. Definitely, and if you, you, you have made your mind up as yet, you can send them ahead of you. No problem, I'll do that. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> Okay. How can our residents reg register for the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine? Well, you can, some persons have already been calling the health centers. So you can continue calling the health centers and I can give you the numbers. So we'll start with Salem. We call the Salem Health Center is 491-5256. The St. Peter's Health Center is 491-5436. The Codger Head Health Center is 491-5258. And the St. John's Health Center is 491-5218, excuse me. So St. John's Health Center, 491-5218. All right, now, last week, we have launched our online um, registration. Mm -hmm. And so that's a plus. I can tell you up to today, we've had 28 persons who have registered online to take the vaccine. So I think that's a good initiative by the Ministry of Health. So to register online, you can www.gov.ms. So let me start again, www.gov.ms slash vaccination. Do you want me to repeat it? Yes, please. <laughs> www.gov.ms slash vaccination. And to date, we have 28 persons who have registered for the vaccine online. Online, okay. That's great stuff. Hopefully mm -hmm. I'll be on the next set with my parents and my sibling. Yes. <laughs> yes, I look forward to seeing all of them. And, and the thing about it, you're an advocate now, officially. I've just made you an advocate. But what I want to know is that persons will come forward and take the vaccines. You remember I said before that the vaccines are going to expire in May. In May. Um, so you know that you want your two doses of vaccine, so that it means that you should register now to get your two doses. You don't want me to come and you have not received your two doses. It is more efficacious if you have your two doses. Yes, one dose will offer you some protection. You'll get a better protection if you have your two doses. So don't wait until too late to come and then may, may passes and you will only get one dose. We are hoping that everyone who wants to take the vaccine will come on board now. And remember that I'm saying that persons um, are waiting to see exactly what happens yeah. and to see how persons react. Mm -hmm. But to date, I can say thank God that we have not had any severe reactions to this vaccine. The reactions that we've had, they are mild. Mm -hmm. And so I want persons, make up your mind, Two weeks have gone, we're into our third week now, mm -hmm. and we have not heard about anybody who's hospitalized, anybody who's fell, who fell down on the ground, who's fallen ill or anything as a result of being immunized. Do you see a happy population just walking around and smiling, nothing has changed? We are good. Mm -hmm. Yes. Can you tell us what happens on the day of the appointment? Um, on the day of the appointment, you will come to the clinic. You would have registered before and then you walk into the clinic. On arrival to the clinic, we'll give you a form to fill out. It's your consent form and it's your data form. Data means you declare this is what disease or underlying diseases I have. So it's your declaration form that's on the front sheet. And secondly, then you have a consent form. So as you read, you declare that I have no underlying or I have whatever disease 
hypertension, diabetes, asthma, immunocompromised, whatever you'll say yes or no. And then you go on, you read about the vaccine on the second page, and then to the back of it, then you'll sign to say, I give consent to be immunized with this vaccine. So when you finish all of that now, mm -hmm. you're going to get your temperature checked, you're going to get your blood pressure, your pulse, and your blood sugar checked. So it's a comprehensive package. Eh? You're not going to just come in and get the vaccine. We're going to know what we're dealing with. We're going to be able to determine whether or not this is something new to you. If you can pick up a new diabetic, a new hypertensive, somebody who's out of control, you want to know where people are at before they take the vaccine. And then we want to know where they're at when they leave from this building. And of course, we have a doctor on site. So if your blood pressure is too high, your blood sugar is uncontrolled, your first time um, hypertensive, we have a doctor on site, we deal with all of that. It's a one-stop shopping package in order to get this vaccine. So you get the vaccine after we assert that everything is okay and that it's okay for you to take the vaccine. You come and you get the vaccine, you get literature and you get an appointment, hard to say, when you're due to come back for your next shot. Then after that, you go to the observation room for 10 to 15 minutes. You finish all of that. You feel okay after that. The nurse will recheck you. You're free to go. It doesn't end there. On the next day after you get the vaccine, our quite able staff will be calling you to find out how did you pass your night? What um, reactions did you have, if any? Can you tell me anything about how you're feeling right now? And then we can give you advice and can say, okay, we're happy to hear that nothing happened. All right, we'll call you back tomorrow to, tomorrow to see if um, anything else happens after two days. Now, if you have severe reactions, we still advise you to call the health center. If the health center is closed, you can call the casualty department. All right, so it is quite interesting. It is something to look forward to. I've known that I've made friends throughout this COVID because they didn't realize that it was like a package and that you can have everything done one time as you come to get this vaccine. So apart from getting the vaccine, you're getting all your other vital signs done and all your other checks done. Okay, so the nurses, are they, did they receive any special training to administer the COVID-19 vaccine? Well, basically what I can tell you that all nurses are trained to give injections. Mm -hmm. However, the district nurses are the ones who now have continued to update their training with regards to immunization, with regards to how do you store vaccines, how do you maintain the cold chain, because it's not like just taking them out and putting them down. You have to ensure when you take them out, you maintain the temperature. So you'll mm -hmm. see us with little ice packs on the desk. So we take the vaccine out, we put it on the ice packs and we ensure that it's given within a certain time period. So we're not gonna take the vaccine out and sit there and talk with you, and then the vaccine is losing its potency because the temperature is dropping. Mm -hmm. What we will do, we have continued training, and I can tell you that the Pan American Health Organization, I have done training with them since last year. Mm -hmm. And so ever so often, maybe twice a week, three times a week, we have training programs. So I've been trained to give the vaccine and I in turn have gone ahead and trained my staff. You wanted to know how many nurses I can remember now that you... <laughs> um, for the district, we have at least 30 nurses in the district okay. that would have been trained to give vaccine. Okay. And our director of nursing service, she has been trained as a public health nurse, so I'll add her as number 14. She's a public okay. health nurse also, and she's been trained to give vaccines. And she was the EBI manager before me. Oh, okay. So I know you spoke about the side effects earlier. I want to know why does a vaccine that is supposed to prevent sickness makes people feel a bit ill? Well, I... I'm not so sure I have the answer for that, but I can tell you, sometimes you have to feel ill first to get better, all right? So you're going to be injecting, like you would have some portion, a mild, a small portion of the COVID-19 injected in a vaccine. So it's going to come into your system. So it's going to find its way around. It's the first time that it's meeting your system. It's gonna find its way around and it's going to settle in and so it can make you a little ill. All right, so sometimes you have to get ill to get better. 
does the timing of the second dose have to be exactly on day 21? Or can no, it be? No, um, the AstraZeneca vaccine, um, the literature says four to 12 weeks. So day 21 is not involved. I think maybe the Pfizer vaccine would be mm -hmm. given on day 21. But for us, we are giving the vaccine, as the literature says, between four and 12 weeks. And so you get that four and 12 weeks after you've gotten your first injection. So you get your injection today, we call this day zero. So four weeks to 12 weeks after that, you get your second dose of the vaccine. Okay. Will the COVID-19 vaccine ever be an annual vaccine? I am not so sure about that one. Um, like the influenza vaccine, because influenza is part of the COVID family, because you remember that we would have had SARS, we would have had MERS. Um, I am not sure if it's going to be annual. What I know is that if a new strain comes up, maybe somebody might decide they're going to make a new vaccine to deal with new strains. So then I'm here for my question, my answer to your question is that I am not sure if it's going to be an annual. We have to wait and see Well, all the trials are being done. When the trials are done, they come up with answers to the questions and then we can say, yes, it's going to be annual every six months, whatever. But of course, I'll update the public when that time comes. All right. I know earlier you told us why is it important for persons to get vaccinated, but can you just briefly remind our audience why they should get vaccinated with the COVID-19 vaccine? Well, the COVID-19 vaccine, it is safe and effective. The side effects, as I said before, it's minimal. We have not had anyone reporting any major side effects on the COVID-19. And it offers protection against the COVID-19 disease. And of course, the immunization process is a smooth process. And if you want to know whether or not you should take the vaccine, let us think about the long-term benefits in taking the vaccine. I am not telling you what the world might do, but I'm telling you based on what I'm hearing, what I'm reading, someday they're going to ask you for proof of immunization before you start traveling. So if you want to eliminate all of that and not be rushing for the vaccine at last minute, come on over, come on down, register and come and get your vaccine now. There's some literature that indicates that maybe a booster may be necessary, maybe later on down the line. That booster may or may not deal with the new variants. You'll hear about some new variants that are coming up. Okay. Um, the COVID-19 doesn't specifically deal with them, but maybe if you get a booster of it, Maybe it covers those strains of the virus, but it is not official, so we'll wait and see. Okay. How many people have registered for the vaccine in Montreal so far? Well, to date, we've had 778 persons registered. Um, up to midday, I can tell you. And that includes our 28 persons who have registered online. Mm -hmm. And I would have... I would want to believe that persons, after I really did my count at midday, that mm -hmm. persons would have still registered. I think over the past maybe two weeks or so, our registration has increased and persons are looking at what's taking place on the ground now and they are coming forward um, to take the vaccine. So today, 778 persons have registered for the vaccine. Wow, you've reached a lot of persons. Yeah, and if you... Um, we, we, had, we would have said that we would have immunized 600 and something. I mm -hmm. worked it out to be 1,304 persons and four doses of vaccines would be needed to cover those 652 persons. All right, so when you look at it, and we have 3,000 doses of the vaccine, mm -hmm. when you actually look at it, you look at it and you say, boy, we nearly gone half with this vaccine, eh? Mm -hmm. So then I'm therefore I need to come and get mine. No, it's rolling out, it's going down. On Wednesday, we are going to be giving another batch of vaccines at the St. John's Health Center. Mm -hmm. So it means another set of persons are eligible for their second dose of vaccine. So every set of persons eligible for second dose, it means the chances of more persons getting the vaccine are less. So if you want to be in the first batch, come on now and register for your vaccine. Of course, remember the health centers are open and remember we have the online registration. So you have options. 
Okay, so after this batch is completed, do you foresee that the ministry will be getting more? Well, I can say maybe later down, um, not right now, because of course you have to get rid of this first batch. Yeah. First, you have to look at the uptake of this vaccine. You have to tell me that you're interested in taking the vaccine so that I can get another set of vaccines to come in. Right. I would not want to bring in another set of vaccine because it has a cost. It yeah. has a cost for the vaccine, it has a shipping cost, mm -hmm. and it has a cost for customs and immigration because remember we have to clear them in Antigua before it comes over here. So there's a lot of cost involved and you'd want to know that persons are willing to take the vaccine before you bring another set of vaccines to actually just sit here. If persons are registering and we see that there's need for a new set of vaccine, yes, we'll bring in a new set of vaccines. But for right now, the set of vaccines we have, they're expiring in May. We're hoping that after May, and we had a good uptake with this set of vaccines, that we will be able to order another set of vaccines. So I encourage everyone to come forward now so that we can plan, because you have to do a lot of planning in all of this. There's a process, we have to see what the uptake is, because if the vaccines are expensive and maybe a thousand doses are remaining at the end of May, you wonder, should I bring another set of vaccines because they're going to be wasted. Yeah. So we play it by ear and based on what happens with this set of vaccines, the Ministry of Health is quite willing to order another set of vaccines. I know you said earlier that you, you've been reading articles about the pros and cons of this vaccine. Is it possible for you to tell the locals what they can read up? or what website they can visit to read up more about this vaccine? All right. Those persons who have been immunized already will get a little handout which they can read about the vaccine. Those persons who have not yet been immunized and are not convinced, they can go on the PAHO website, Pan American Health Organization, and you can put in AstraZeneca vaccines and you'll get information. So you can go on World Health Organization, Pan American Health Organization, and of course AstraZeneca, the Oxford AstraZeneca has a website that they have available for persons to get information. I have with me a leaflet. Um, this leaflet has been done by the Ministry of Health and we have been offering it to persons prior to the vaccine's arrival. So if you want to read upon this, you can pass by the health center and get a copy of this, or you can pass by and get a copy of the sheet that was sent to us with the vaccines. It has all the information. So this tells you what you need to know about the AstraZeneca vaccines, about the side effects, about why is it important, and how does the vaccine work. All of this information is on this little leaflet. Our motto is strengthen your defense, so be immunized and strengthen your defense. All okay. right, so I can repeat, so the Pan American Health Organization and WHO and AstraZeneca itself has a website that you can read up on the vaccine. Okay, Nurse B, thank you so much for instilling some more knowledge to me about the COVID-19 vaccine that is here on island. I will surely inform my parents and my sibling so that we can all come and your co-workers your co-workers your friend let me deal with me. my family first, first and then and then you I'll mean, go is that difficult friends. okay yes, you know i know i know i know <laughs> but i so think I'll, i can assist you in that area so if you need my help i'm here i know you got me i know you got me i know you got me thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule to have a little chat with me about the covid19 vaccines all right and i thank you for having me and before i go i would just like to give special thanks to the department of information and technology and the e-government for assisting us with designing our online registration and they have given us a lot of technical support and they were able to assist us in accomplishing this so just say thanks to them thanks to niche thanks to kurt mr partlet all of those persons who have worked with us and of course the staff at guides leaving out no one before you go i have some quick questions that i want you to answer really quick just yes. to end off the show they're all about monster so you don't have to worry, just pick okay. questions. 
All right. So you have to choose your favorite one. Did I get a choice? Which is my yeah. favorite one, I'm or you're gonna, gonna give me? I'm gonna give you, and then okay. you tell me which one you prefer. Okay. So, barber cheese or ginger steak? Ginger steak. <laughs> Woodlands Bay or Little Bay? Woodlands Bay. Heliconia or the Irish clover? Heliconia. Plain rice or rice and peas? Rice and peas. Cricket or basketball? And you better answer this honestly. <laughs> Cricket. <laughs> String band or iron band? Honestly, iron band. <laughs> I knew that. <laughs> Reggae or calypso? Calypso. St. Patrick's or Christmas? Christmas. Sorrel or ginger beer? Both. <laughs> I'm a cheater. <laughs> uh, I like both, but you'll get some of each. In the sorrel drink, because sorrel drink is made with ginger, Mixing. most persons do. But I like ginger beer, I like sorrel. So if, you, if I had to choose between the two, I'd take sorrel because I get some of both in the sorrel drink. But if you gave me a choice and I can choose all two, i will take the two. <laughs> no problem, you just mix it for you. No worries. Yes, thank you. Manish water or goat water? Goat water. Black sand or white sand? I like white sand. <laughs> I tell you, I like white sand. I've gotten accustomed to appreciate my black sand beaches. But when I see the white sand beaches, I go crazy. I just like white sand beaches. Very or plain? Uh, um, plain. <laughs> Bird watching or turtle watching? Bird watching. Hiking or swimming? Both. I <laughs> My father was a fisherman. I learned to swim at a very early age. So I can swim now, but I like to hike. Lucky you with that swimming part. Um, I like hiking, but um, I, I grew up in Happy Hill Salem. So I spent a lot of time at the beach and I enjoy swimming. The Cots Trail or the Dry Waterfall Trail? The dry waterfall trail, although there's some risk to it coming down those stones, but I like it because at the end of it, you get to see the beauty of the dry waterfall. Yeah. Okay, thank you so much, Nurse B, for sitting in with me on the second episode of Women's Drag Moves. Really appreciate it. Thank you, and it was my pleasure being here. And I hope that I would have done some justice to the program and I would have convinced a few persons more to come in and register for the vaccine. It's available, come on, register and get immunized. Thank you once again. All right, you're welcome dear, bye. Guys, thank you so much for tuning in to the second episode of Monster at Moves. I hope that you found the show very useful and that we have answered all of your COVID-19 questions. I am still a bit nervous myself, but Nurse B has really helped me to understand why I need to take this vaccine. And when I do, I'll take you guys along with me. On next week's episode, we'll be speaking with the first remote working family, that is the Mortons who are currently working, living, and homeschooling right here in Montserrat. There is still time for you to apply for the Montserrat 12 Months Remote Workers Stamp, and you can do so by visiting www.montserratremoteworker.com. Remember, this episode was sponsored by Hypnotic Expression Wear. To view more pieces like my hat, you can visit www.expressionwear.co. See you next time. Hypnotic expression. We are, we are on the thing. So she on the beat, mama tell what go on dog Hypnotic bring the white as a t-shirt, the neck of V first Hypnotic hot for me, it match with my sneakers Anything so she don't tap in and never cheapers But suit them a wear enough, do research